Hello, and thank you for joining us. This is No Sound Bites Allowed, and I am your host, Michael Voss, the Dragon of the Southern Tier. I'm happy to be here with you as we are coming to the end of the year 2021. It has been a very interesting year, a year filled with many uh, promises and many deceits. This has been a year of many problems internationally as well as domestically. And throughout this year, for over 280 videos, we have been together with you speaking about these issues that affect not just the United States, but the entire world. And we thank you for being our audience throughout this year and following these stories with us. We're going to show you the top 10 videos, and we want to celebrate with you, letting you hear some of the thoughts and themes that were the year 2021. The year started in confusion, anger, and distrust. By the end of the year, 2021 remains in, the, in that position. From questions of credibility that led to substantial protests to protests seeking their own substance. We spoke with you in over 280 videos and live streams. Together, we grew addressing the hard subjects, even as the channel suffered punishment in a threat to destroy 11 years of work on YouTube alone. The major media had a message. Trust. Obey an old man and his uh, absent second in command. We were told our bodies are not our own, merely a pincushion to politics. Our children to be guided on a dark educational path by those unrelated to them with agendas. Ultimately, we were instructed to embrace being defenseless by people who lied to our faces as our allies are set adrift as enemies are emboldened. How do we reduce all this into just 10 videos? We can't. So, you'll get a couple of bonus videos. So, here are the videos of 2021. The top stories you spoke about, called, and commented on. Watched week after week. We are at, we at No Sound Bites Allowed. Thank you for being our audience. We appreciate your insight, your comments, your attention to details and stories glossed over by the major news media and politicians alike. 2022 will be challenging. Midterm elections, economic struggles, international turbulence will all definitely occur. Even so, together, we will make the most informed choices possible. America and what America means to the rest of the world will never be given short shrift on this channel. Together, we will grow, we will persevere, we will make the most of 2022 together. With that said, we want to show you some of the most interesting stories of 2021. Again, look at what we're being told. You're going to go through this process and you're going to end at a point that has already been predetermined. The outcome is already known. You have no choice in this system. It is closed. You have no other voices that are introduced into this system. You have only one path, and you must walk down that path to some extent. These are individuals who are threatening an assault against a member of the press who have refused to allow military, uh, excuse me, the police in to, their, to this zone with all those homes, all those individuals, whether they agree or not, are being held accountable. They are basically kidnapped. And they are, and this is an area that has denied the powers of the election, the uh, laws and legislation that we all live by. And that's okay. Democrats have no problem with that. Rather, de uh, progressives have no problem with that. The socialists have no problem with that because there is a political agenda they want to achieve. That is a problem. That is a massive problem. You want to talk about insurrection. This caused a man to die. I want to be very explicit. 
on what this is. As you can see, this is from the New York State Assembly, and this is Bill A00416, introduced by Assemblyman Perry. And what this bill says, if you read through it, is that the government will be allowed to take you from your home and lock you up because Governor Cuomo thinks you are a health risk. Let me say this on the big screen. New York State government is trying to be able, they're trying to give Governor Cuomo and any delegate, which means anybody in government, which means County Executive Jason Garnar and anyone else, they are trying to give them the power to come to your home and arrest you and take you out of your home and throw you in a, some detention space because you have COVID or they think you have COVID or you didn't get the COVID vaccine. And that is real. Now you Hi, Mavis. Mavis joined us. Hi, where are you? And uh, Mavis mentions they're going to sneak it in like they did with the e-cigarette liquid uh, last year. It doesn't get any more real than this. I know it doesn't. That's why when I saw this, I said, I have to talk about this. This has to be the first thing we're talking about today. Because this is insane. And if they're doing it in New York, New York is the testing ground of progressive ideology between New York and California. And either California does something or New York does it. The other one will copy it. And then every other progressive state, every leader that is a progressive Democrat will copy it on and keep it going. That's why we have 17 states with red flag legislation, which is an alteration and a continuation of the idea of the New York Safe Act. And all of these bills are meant to restrict the Second Amendment. And everyone said, well, you can't do that. That won't happen. And it has. And it's across the nation. And 17 states have it. And it's getting bigger. My name is Michael Vasquez, and I am a homeowner and resident of Binghamton, New York. And I have to say that I was deeply troubled when I saw the video and heard of this book. There's something that's being said here over and over again, and I think it's very important to understand it. We're introducing politics to the very youngest and most vulnerable of our children in our community. I think that's wrong. That's not the place of education. That's not the place of the school system. Now, I want to be very clear. I am not blaming the teachers, per se. I am not blaming the school system, per se. This is a bigger problem. Perhaps the community hasn't been paying attention enough to allow this to seep in but unlike many people who will be speaking, and they have very personal, serious reasons why they believe in social justice and then why they believe in equity. But let's understand, that's not what the school is there for. The school is there to teach the children, not about equity, a political ideology, not about social justice, a political ideology. And if you do wish to do that, keep that to the high schools where we have the young adults about to enter into society and going on to higher learning who can understand and deal with these complicated issues. Instead, what we should be looking at is teaching the fundamentals of these children so that they understand the words, the meanings, the ideas, and the ability to uh, understand and interpret these ideas so that when they are introduced to these political issues, they are able to address those political issues. School isn't about equity. That's for our politicians. That's for uh, grown adults. You want to talk about uh, social justice? Do that. But I can tell you, it is upsetting to me, and it doesn't matter what my race is, but it is upsetting to me when I watch a video, which has since been removed, where a teacher is apologizing for being born in a certain location. What lesson is being transferred? Because she started the conversation before she started reading the book in the video that was removed saying that she was sorry that she had been born and there weren't a, a large diversity in her neighborhood. That's a bad message. Having a story that's telling us about the bad, the, the ills of police is a separating and bad issue. That isn't promoting the lesson of 
Can you spell? Can you read? Do you understand the meanings of the words? Can you do mathematics? Can't, do you have the basic fundamental building blocks to allow you to then understand more complex issues and then to take a position? And more importantly, if you want this book to be read, something, uh, again, the book is Something Happened, that should be done with parents, not teachers in the school system. You can call from anywhere in the world. This is an international broadcast that I'm doing, the live stream. And I'm looking for your comments and your thoughts. Whether you agree or disagree, it's perfectly fine. You can tell me you think I'm wrong. I want to hear why. In fact, all of our healthcare workers and all of the people who may need a healthcare worker would love to hear for those people like Kathy Holchel, like Jason Garnar, that are telling us, uh, County Executive Jason Garnar, that are telling us they have a plan and that we have no problem, please tell me, call in and tell me why. Because I see nothing but problems and no solutions coming from our government. I only see them making it worse. And they're doing it all at the same time while disrespecting the Constitution, disrespecting the Fourth Amendment, dis disrespecting the Hippocratic Oath and the American citizens that they are sworn to protect. This is not how you protect the public. Not in my opinion. You may disagree. And I'd like to hear why if you do. Or you can tell me why you agree with what I'm speaking about. It's up to you, folks. Because unlike the rest of the news media, I want to hear your voice. Because they have made you silent. They have told you you can't speak. They have told you that you need to shut up. I don't agree with that. That's not the way that America is supposed to work. We need to have it. We need to have this conversation. She's come out and made these allegations that a 10-year-old girl refutes. And I have to ask the question, we have to understand the situation of, has this helped us at all? Has this improved our lives? Have they made us safer as they have lied to our face, telling us that something a 10-year-old can do is impossible? Well, the simple answer is no, it isn't. If we go just simply to the news, in, just in Houston, where Sheila Jackson Lee is the congresswoman, well, in, 400 people have been murdered in Houston in 2020, according to the December 29th, 2020 article by ABC 13 News. That was a spike and a high all time. It's higher than what they had seen even in 2015. It's a 42% increase over 2019. And what we can tell for sure about this is that they weren't the only city that had that problem. In fact, we know that this has happened according to the National Fraternal Order of Police. Well, we see that Philadelphia, Minneapolis, Indianapolis, New Orleans, Nashville, Washington, D.C., New York City, Chicago, Houston, L.A., St. Louis, Milwaukee, Seattle, St. Louis, Dallas, Miami, Atlanta, Boston. Every single one of these major cities had the same increase in violent crime in 2020. And just about every single one of these cities also had riots and quote, protests, mostly peaceful protests, as we are told by CNN and MSNBC, happened in every one of these major cities. So again, we see that the violent, the criminal, have gone out and they committed crimes. Gun with guns and also without. We weren't made any safer. Matter of fact, if we look at Chicago today, Right now, according to the last reporting, January 12th, uh, Tuesday, in Chicago, according to the Chicago Tribune, 91 people have been shot this year, 33 more people than in 2020. That is an enormous number. And something that we should take away from that is that Chicago has every single legislation, every gun control issue, every promise that has ever been made about gun control over the last 50 years exists in Chicago and has existed for decades. And yet, 
we have seen that this is one of the deadliest cities in America. Over 4,000 people were shot in 2020 alone. And again, 91 just in the first 18 days of 2021. We have not been made any more safe. And yet we are hearing from representatives in Congress, in our states, that are telling us, all from the Democratic side, the progressive movement, that are telling us, don't worry, just give the government a little more power, take away a little bit more of your rights, and you will be safe. New York State says, this letter is in response to the Freedom of Information Law request you submitted to New York State Office of Children and Family Services on November 12th of 2020. Your request was for a copy of a number of children that were removed from homes or families affected if records are kept in this manner. Per the mandates of CPS, as a direct or indirect consequence of extreme risk protection orders, ERPO, or red flag actions in New York State since February 2019. In addition to the total number of children or families requesting the number of to be broken down by county. After diligent search, Child Protective Services, New York State, certifies we do not maintain the records you are seeking. I believe this is troubling. I believe this is troubling for any family that owns a firearm. I believe this is troubling for anyone who is seeking to have due process in the United States, the Fifth Amendment, that any individual uh, how did we word this back in 2018? We want to be, make sure we make this clear because this is what red flag laws mean, especially in New York State. Uh, I believe it is, here it is. While Bill A11148, which verbatim became law, oops, which, be, which verbatim became law in New York State, the red flag actions and laws for New York State allows for a part-time temporary badminton court coach and potentially almost any member of a school or school system to initiate an extreme risk protection order. The fact it affects more than just the ownership of firearms is never addressed. So if you are in New York State and in many other states, if you have a temporary, temporary, Badminton coach. They can enact a red flag action, a extreme risk protection order against you and your family. Virtually, there are dozens of individuals that could potentially claim a red flag action against you. Coworkers, as we have seen in New York State, as it has already been done in Oneida County, coworkers can initiate a red flag action against someone just because of an argument, which can affect their livelihood, their ability to work, their standing in their community, and thus their children and families. This can happen to you. Tens of millions of Americans will be affected by this, especially if Joe Biden does in fact go forward as, ha as he has promised. And we reached out to each and every one of these individuals. We know them. We've spoken with them. In fact, Fred Akshar, Donald Lepardo, and Doug Smith have all appeared on this program at least once, if not several times, to uh, speak with us in interviews that you have heard. So they know us well. And we were speaking about the Fourth Amendment and the Fifth Amendment, which we believe that this bill, Assembly Bill A416, violates. That it destroys our right to privacy, it destroys our ability for due process, it is a abnormal punishment for a non-crime. And this is something that we took very seriously. So we reached out to each and every one of those members and we asked them for a comment on where they stand because we believe it is important to hold our elected officials accountable to the public. Where they stand, the public needs to know. We believe in that transparency. Going into 
into the business. Uh, several people gone in. So. We've gone into the business. And there's a uh, getting a pretty steady crowd going in. So they have gone into the business. Uh, they, they appear to be protesting inside the business. We're not going to go in. I'm outside. I'm outside the business and like to have out. Lock them up! 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 The lights are off inside the business as well as outside. Uh, there is a large crowd inside the business at this moment. Yeah. It seems they're standing on tables. As you can see. I think you can see that. I know it may be a little dark, but that's just because we're outside the location. As long as they don't do anything to the property. I'm not sure if the crowd has grown or if it's just shifted, but there's several hundred people. It looks like some of the people are leaving the business at this moment. Yeah. Some people are leaving the business. But many of them remain inside. It is a felony they would like. Some in New York State would like it to be a felony for an American citizen to have body armor. And I want you to think about that. We're talking about a bulletproof vest. That's what they want. If you own a bulletproof vest in New York, there are members of the New York Assembly and therefore the New York population, it would seem, but more likely the legislative class that want to give you a crime. It is a crime to own body armor. What is a bulletproof vest? It's a way to protect you. It's a way to protect your life. That's what a bulletproof vest does. Now, I'm not sure if anyone is aware, and I'm not aware of it, of how a bulletproof vest is able to harm others. 
Uh, perhaps I'm misunderstanding something here. But in every example I can find of a bulletproof vest, there is literally zero offensive capabilities of a bulletproof vest. No matter what type you're looking at, there are no offensive capabilities. So when you hear of a bill that has been created by members of New York State's Democratic single party legislature, you have to ask yourself, why are they doing this? Now, and I want to be very clear, in 2019, New York State is a single party rule, just as it is right now. Democrats controlled all of the party. They have control of the state legislature and Governor Cuomo. So they were able to pass anything that they want. And in looking at this, this bill, which is very straightforward, says you just can't have body armor. Well, that's 2019, you'll tell me. And say, Mike, you know, that's over 18 months ago. It doesn't matter. Dumb bill, who cares? I care because it's now New York State Assembly Bill A352. And in Bill A352, once again, we see the same list of individuals. Assemblymember Jacobson, McDonough, Monsanto, and Gottfried. It's growing. There is a growing number of members of New York State's legislature that want to prevent American citizens from owning a body vest, a bulletproof vest. A device that is designed specifically to protect you from gun violence. A device that is meant to keep you safe. That has zero offensive capabilities. Why? This is a really simple one. This, I can't imagine this conversation being very long, but it is a conversation that apparently needs to be had with the New York State Assembly and the legislature and to ask them, why are you trying to make American citizens, in particular residents of New York, less safe? You know, when this was sent to me by one of the audience members, and said, Mike, you won't believe this when you see this. you got to check it out. I looked at it, and I thought, this has got to be crazy. And I looked back, and I saw, in 2019, they were trying to do this then. And I'm thinking to myself, why in the world would you do that? I mean, we know that New York State is getting, there's more violence in New York State because of the coronavirus and the regulations put against American citizens about that. We can see that. Violent crimes with firearms has increased 23% as of March. And we know that we ended the year in New York City alone with about a 197% increase in firearm violence and death. Mind you, it's not nearly as bad as in Chicago, where there were over 4,000 victims of firearm violence, but still bad enough. And yet we have to sit back and wonder, with that fact, with that knowledge, that gun violence is up. And again, you think that the New York, uh, we just showed you the New York GEV report, which up until March, the, the, the 2020 numbers have not been finalized. But we knew in the first three months of New York, uh, in New York, in 2020, that violence is up, murder, up. So. Rape and, and robbery and aggravated assault up. This is a problem. And at a time where American citizens are being confined in their homes, are being subject to more assaults and robberies and domestic abuse, and this has led to more violent crime, why wouldn't anyone want American citizens to be able to be safer? It makes no sense. Last week, at the last event, uh, the major news media put out several articles stating that the uh, healthcare workers were disgruntled. 
in my conversations with, I know, but in my conversations, uh, which were off the record at that time with those individuals, they did not convey that message. I'm not quite hearing that from you today. What would you say to the news media that is portraying you as a radical, a, in, a part of a fringe, even though there's 250 people here, and that you are disgruntled? Well, that's, it doesn't surprise me, number one. And number two, that is the kind of information that is being put out here. self-same media, all major news media in this region, who are aware of this event, did not show up. As far as at 5.15, I've been here since 30, none of them have shown up. Not one member of elected government has shown up. And not one member of government has shown back up. What would you say to both of those? And uh, finally, I always like to ask, you have an audience that's speaking to many people, including many of the elected officials and news members who watch this. Do you have anything to say uh, that you want to say? You know, when we first had the mandate um, on September 2nd when the notice came out, myself and a bunch of my employees, and I, my, my fellow employees, and I know uh, Facebook page and any other healthcare workers in the area, you know, bombarded some of our local officials, and because of that, um, one did write a letter to our new uh, governor, and I would hope that more people would stand up, because what they don't understand is that if these people really did quit their job, that hospital, UHS, and a lot of doctor's offices are going to be in big trouble, because who is going to be there to fill those spots? Good who is going to be there? So this woman who is barely able, if we say this young woman who is in college and is barely able to afford the, the fact that she's going to college, she now has to come up with the money and the time to take a psychological test, to make an application, to pay the fees for that application, to buy a firearm, and then to buy, get an entirely separate application and a separate license to be able to afford ammunition. And if in that process she failed to do any of that, then she's going to be fined $75,000. In this case, she has a firearm that was gifted to her by her grandfather that she would still need to get a license for. This is a gift that was given to her and she would still need to go through that entire process coming up with the money for that, in, for that license that the government may still deny her for. And if she doesn't do it, even though she's gotten this gift from her grandfather and so she possesses it, she would possibly go to jail for 15 years while in college. She would have to pay $75,000 on top of her student loans because she was poor. That doesn't seem to be very fair. Or how about we understand it from another point of view, that she is depressed because she had someone who raped her. And because she was raped, she was depressed. But she wants to take care of her Second Amendment rights. She wants to protect herself from that rape in the future. And 
she goes through the process. She gets the money together to be able to afford the licensing programs that are there as a barrier. And she affords that and goes to the psychological exam. And they determine that in the past, she was depressed. Not then, not that day, but she was depressed in the past because she had been raped. And therefore, they deny her her right to defend herself in the future from another rape. How are you helping anyone, Representative Sheila Jackson Lee? How are you helping that woman in that scenario? In the description, in the example I have just provided, how are you helping American citizens protect themselves? Oh, I understand. You mean to tell me that you expect that there will be a police officer at every corner of every block, everywhere in America, every hour of every day? Oh, that's not going to happen. You don't like the police. You want to defund the police. You want to have less police. So American citizens have to rely on themselves more. But you're taking away our ability to protect ourselves. You won't even let us get bulletproof vests. You're making that illegal in some states. So I don't understand this. How is the American public made better off? And I ask you again. Even with the fine, how is this affecting criminals? Where are the criminals being stopped by this? Do you think a criminal who is using a firearm and is willing to kill a human being is going to worry about the fact that they have to pay a fine of $75,000? They're not going to pay the fine. They're a criminal because they're trying to get $75,000. So they'll go to jail. They were going to go to jail anyway. They were willing to commit murder and go to jail anyway. The little kids in the gang banging crap that they do, they're not worried about fines. They're not worried about going to jail for murder. So do you think a fine of $75,000 or 15 years is going to stop them somewhere? That this is going to prevent them? The laws we have right now don't do it. Why is this additional law going to do it? You know, there is some really... It's really frustrating to me that somehow we see a lot of these Democrats, these progressive in Congress and in leadership, they seem to think that if we just make another law, that suddenly the criminals and the deranged are suddenly going to realize, oh my God, they wrote another law doing the same thing that the other laws did, and now I have to listen. You just have to write enough laws. If you write the laws enough times, taking away people's rights every single time, eventually there's going to be a law that this criminal is going to look at and go, oh my God, you know, now I, I see the light of day. I'm no longer going to break the law. No, they're not. That isn't what happens. That's not a reality. That isn't even a pipe dream. That's a delusion. But again, I come back to this bill, H.R. 127. What have I described to you? Reading the bill itself that tells you that a criminal will not go forward and commit a crime with a firearm, that a deranged individual will not go out and kill someone, that a terrorist, whether it's domestic or foreign, will come to America and kill American citizens. Please tell me how this stops any of them.